Hello and welcome to the Stay Strong Live Long channel. I'm your host Rod. It's our regular Tuesday for me, Tuesday 9am live stream. Monday for most of the rest of you. So if you are just tuning in, let us know where you're from. We'll give you a shout out a little bit later. I'm always interested in hearing what part of the world people are tuning in from. Uh, today we've got our very special moderators, Bonnie and Melissa, in the background. They will be, they're like the concierges of the channel. They like escort people through, they answer people's questions, they say hi, they help me out, they remind me to look at the camera and smile and stuff like that. So thank you very much for Bonnie and Melissa tuning in from Copper's Kitchen. So today I wanted to well, firstly, I'll just do a little slight intro for anyone who is new to the channel. So uh, I started eating the carnival way about 100 days ago. That's one of the things I like to talk about in this channel. And that's a big part of the live streams. It's an opportunity for you to ask questions. There would be other community members here who have been eating the carnival way for a lot longer than what I have. But feel free to ask questions, uh, say hi, and then go ahead with your questions. I'll just drop that into the uh ticker there and my uh my as far as this channel goes i talk about the kind of way of eating exercise uh sleep mindset there's a whole bunch of things that i like to talk about but today i wanted to <clears throat> excuse me focus in on dairy um, because uh it's so the eating the carnival way is is obviously an animal based diet and dairy forms part of that for those people who can tolerate dairy products so i've got uh, my my favorites as far as dairy goes so I usually have butter in my coffee and I do cream as well like thickened cream so obviously the less actual milk there is the less milk sugar there's going to be in your dairy products so milk cream I use that occasionally it's one of those things I'm prone to binging on so if I buy a tub of cream then it usually doesn't last the day so I I tend to restrict myself every two or three days with the cream. Uh, I don't do milk. So about milk, so milk is a complete food from a macro perspective because it has carbohydrates, it has protein, it has, it has fat in it as well. But if you are trying to go low carb, then milk is probably not going to help facilitate that because it, it has a lot of uh, lactose, which lactose is... I believe it is a lactase. It's a molecule which is lactase and glucose together. And when it gets broken down your stomach, it becomes um, a, a sugar and a, it's a carbohydrate. Hence the reason why it's so sweet. And a lot of people, um, once, once you get past sort of five years old, then the enzyme that's required to break down milk isn't produced in your body. There is a, a genetic aberration in some European uh, populations that the adults actually have the necessary enzyme that continues on at, into adulthood that allows you to break down lactase. I think I'm one of those because I don't I don't have any sort of upset if I ever consume milk. I really have it these days. I'd like to be able to get raw milk if we can get it here in Australia, but it's really hard to find. You can't just go and buy it from the local supermarket. And then there's cheese. So yeah, I, there's obviously lots of different kinds of cheese. That's something that I have pretty much every day. I definitely have butter every day. I don't have cream every day. It's for every couple of days on average. And then have cheese as well. So, um, you know, dairy isn't a, it's a, it can be pro-inflammatory. So one of the great things about eating the carnival way is you're reducing inflammation from your food sources in a very big way. Um, I was talking to a, my boss at my new job this morning about inflammation and how, um, you know, there's lots of places where inflammation can creep in. So if you've got a really high stress lifestyle, if you're not getting enough sleep and through your diet. So uh, uh, first and foremost, the way I look at it is carnivore is an elimination diet. So it'll, it, you eliminate a whole bunch of foods. And for the most part, as far as eating meat goes, very few people will... Uh, have any sort of inflammation caused by consuming animal products. Now, dairy is sort of one step up from that. So some people are okay with dairy. They might be okay with butter and cheese, maybe not with cream or milk. Some people, maybe they're just 
with butter only and some people find that it's still a, it still causes an inflammatory response and it needs to be like a, a fairly rare thing or they can't have it at all but in any case the it's just a matter of working out what actually works for you so i'm i feel fortunate that i don't have any issues with uh, inflammation with dairy because i really like dairy so i'm happy to be keeping it in so what is your favorite uh, dairy do you have a favorite kind of cheese I just discovered mascarpone, is it, no, mascarpone, mascarpone cheese. Uh, one of my guests who I interviewed last week who hasn't, their video's not published yet, she talked about mascarpone cheese and I'm like, I haven't even tried that, I don't even know what that is, so I've got to give that a go or see if I can find it in my supermarket. Um, there are so many different cheeses I love, uh, well brie is one of my favourites, my three year old son actually likes brie as well, and yeah, all the soft cheeses I like to do, I like the blue cheeses, I like cheddar cheese. Oh, it's like I could oh, cheese is like its own food group for me. So let's have a little bit of a look and see who's been tuning in. In GM, it's 11 p.m. and you're tuning in from Malta now. I feel like you've changed the name on your handle, and I just I know I know you've tuned into our channel before. But anyway, thanks for tuning in uh, today as well and staying up so late. Lorraine finally caught a live fellow Sydney cider. Welcome. Which part of Sydney are you in? I'm in the Bronx of the eastern suburbs in Hillsdale, which is near Maroubra. Just in case you wanted to know. Joanne Hint, thank you for tuning in. It's actually Anna from Port Alberni in British Columbia. In, <laughs> try that again. British Columbia in Canada. Thanks for tuning in today. Kidoval, welcome. Everybody's welcome. You know... I'll, I'll, no matter how you like to eat, you're always welcome to tune in uh, with the live streams, as long as you're kind, and as long as you ask good questions. Yeah, doesn't matter what, what you do. Um, my, my thing I always say to people, if you can eliminate processed food out of your diet, so things that have got a, a long list of ingredients on the box, you're on your way to um, being healthy if that was a major part of your diet. Uh, Bonnie, mascarpone is so good. Yeah, well, I'm keen to try it out. What, is it like any other sort of similar treats? Cheese, because I've done zero. I don't even know what it looks like. I have no idea at all. I've never actually gone looking for it, never even heard of it before. I, if somebody had said mascarpone to me before, I would think it was like that. Isn't there some sort of icing? You know, like something that goes in icing? I don't know. It's, <laughs> that's the first thing I thought of. Uh, Rich Walker watching from Tennessee. Welcome. Tennessee. Isn't there some kind of like country music? Um, I, so I grew up listening to a country music, Willie Nelson, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstad. But isn't there some kind of major event? It's not like the Grand Ole Opry, but it's something like that in Tennessee. I can't exactly remember. Uh, your husband is one of the island's top chefs on Malta. Cool. Does, does, he, um, does he like to cook any particular kind of food it does is he carnivore as well that's the other question i have rich walker love cheese fine without milk yeah i think i think there's just so many health benefits that go along with being low carb zero carb that's the main reason that i um have milk out of my diet as a regular thing but if i could get hold of raw milk i'd be a bit like lily kane who i interviewed a couple of weeks ago there's a if you look at the channel Lily Kane, she has a couple of big glasses of raw cow's milk every morning. At least she was last time I spoke to her. And um, yeah, it's. It, I thought, well, that that would actually be really, really nice. But it wouldn't. It would then mean that I'd be quite a significant, high, a significantly higher number of carbohydrates. Would definitely kick me out of ketosis. And I just feel like at my age that you know ketosis is a is a pretty important thing to be in a lot of time a lot of the time so that's why I'm, I'm keeping it out Lorraine yeah the Bronx you haven't heard that term before I, I, I haven't heard it I just made it up because it's a very very small suburb there's only like 2,000 or so people and um, it's just completely different to the other suburbs that are around here but I really like it you can walk to everything I can walk to my local Aldi my local Woolworths I can get on a bus and go to one of the like um, East Gardens Westfield Shopping Centre. It's not very far to go to the beach. It's great. I can just leave my car in the driveway most of the time, which I enjoy. And you're on the northern beaches in Collaroy. So when I first moved to Sydney, I 
lived in DY for a while, which is really close to there. And uh, and then I lived in French's Forest. So I used to drive up the Wakehurst Parkway to get to work every day from DY to go to French's Forest. Very nice part of the world, indeed. Okay. Oh, let's see. If, oh, that's all the messages that I've got there. So... Tell me about uh, what's your favorite. Actually, you know what? I'll I'll just do a quick channel update. So uh, let me just share my screen here. And that one there. Okay. All right. So actually, this is a video that's not yet released yet. The reason I've got this on the screen is because this is the next one that's coming out. So I interviewed Nia from Nia's Way last week. And I'm just finalizing the last little bits and pieces. So that should be out tomorrow. That's one to look out for. There was a lot of people really enjoyed uh, this one here, which was the interview that I did from Anita from Ketogenic Woman. And I think it's probably going to be a very similar thing. There's, I, I, do, I really enjoy doing the interviews. And I think it's one of the most fun things about being a, a creator on YouTube is being able to interview other people. So... Hopefully you guys will get a lot out of uh, these interviews because I've got two, two, in, two more in the bag at the moment. And looking forward to celebrating 3,000 subscribers very soon. We're getting pretty close, so that's pretty exciting. I had no... Well, when did, this, when did the channel start? It was August. was the beginning of August. Um, thanks to all you guys. I, I, I had no, I'd, no idea that we'd be able to... Uh, grow the channel to where it is today and uh, I really appreciate your support so yeah, it's, it's been heaps of fun I'm really enjoying this part of this new part of my life doing things on YouTube so what else did I want to cover today so I've done a channel update what am I reading uh, I just there was there was a book that I was just reading recently on do I have it? Oh, it's this one here, actually. I'll just share this tab. And you can see this one here. I don't know if any of you have read this book here. It's uh, this particular one. It's, as you can see, I read a lot of other uh, interesting books. But this one by Benjamin Bickman, Dr. Ben Bickman, Why We Get Sick. He is he's someone that's been interviewed on all the big... Uh, Carnivore channels, so Dr. Berry, um, uh, Dr. Chafee, uh, all, all, of the, all of the other uh, influences in that area. It's just an expert on the subject of um, insulin resistance and how that relates, so how insulin and uh, fat and carbohydrate consumption, how they all work together to ultimately be the root of many sicknesses that we have to deal with. So in his view, by fighting and curing insulin resistance, you can actually pretty much cure yourself of almost all other ailments. They all seem to stem from this here. And it's something that he's been researching um, as, as, as a researcher for almost, I think, 15 years now. Really, really interesting guy and definitely an interesting book if, if you're into the, the technical side of things. One that I could definitely recommend to you. So what's your favorite? Who, I'm interested in hearing about what your favorite dairy product, assuming that you consume dairy, let me know what your favorite is and why it's your favorite. Um, definitely cream is my favorite. Absolutely. And as far as cheeses go, what would be my favorite there? You know, I like a good triple brie. That seems to be the thing that I enjoy the most at the moment. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's an excellent book. I haven't finished it yet, Bonnie, but it's one of those ones that I'm working on in between all the other things that, I, <laughs> that I'm reading. I read a lot of books for my other Woo Woo channel. Actually, somebody asked about what the Woo Woo channel is. Its, it's name is Untethered Consciousness. So if I ever mention that during one of my videos, if... Um, I'll usually put that a link to that in the description as well. But for those of you who are, who are interested and you enjoy the topic of things like near-death experiences, which is what I mostly interview people about, then, yeah, go and check that one out as well. Bonnie, it's cream and cottage cheese. Yeah, don't do a lot of cottage cheese. 
there's an option. I haven't really thought about that actually. So I'm going to grab some of that. Joanne, cream and cottage cheese are my go-to as well. Do you put the cottage cheese on something? Well, I guess, what could you put it on? I was thinking like in, back in the day, I would have put that on a um, like a rice biscuit. Now I wouldn't use the rice biscuit, maybe just spoon it out. Melissa from Copper's Kitchen, that is very generous for you. Thank you <laughs> for the phone fund. Thank you very much. I, oh, for those who, those of you who don't know what the phone fund is, so I have a uh, a segment called the Dishwashing Philosopher, and I'm sure most people here have seen that segment, and I film that using my iPhone 10, which is. As you would know, it's for those of you who've got an iPhone, it's a pretty old phone these days. It does an okay job, and I don't have any other lighting other than the lighting that comes from the kitchen window. I'm just trying to do it on the cheap, and um, you know, rather than upgrading to a new phone, and I'd rather wait until actually the uh, the channel produces sufficient income so I can buy myself a new phone. So my goal is to, I think, buy like an iPhone 12 or a 13 that does a much better job in that particular environment and there we go that was that was what the that's what the phone fund is all about so rather than sort of i'm trying to exercise some delayed gratification as i mentioned in my previous video there's a lot of joy that can be had from delaying gratification so if it means that i have to wait like four or five or six months to actually upgrade my phone then I'm happy to do that, but I'm not going to pay for it out of uh, my other income. It's just got to be from whatever comes from this channel. And I think I've, um, I'm up to about $80. So yeah, I'm on, I'm on the way. I think it's probably going to cost about eight or $900 for a phone. So that's the long-winded way of saying thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Uh, well, bless your heart. Thank you for tuning in. I don't remember seeing you here before. So if this is your first time, thanks for uh, joining me this morning. Whole milk, Greek yogurt and Bursin cheese. Is that how you pronounce that? Bursin? Never heard of it before. I've got to look that up. Bursin cheese. What does it look like? Oh, okay. So it's looking like... It's some sort of a gourmet cheese that has other things mixed mixed in with it. Let me just pop this up on the screen. I've never actually, I've never seen it before. Yeah. Okay. So Burson is like a brand and it has different, different things that are added to it. Yeah. It looks really yummy. I like that. And the whole milk Greek yogurt. Yeah. Don't really do, oh, I guess yogurt's a, another dairy. Much lower carb than milk is, so I can I can get down with that for sure. Bonnie, great source of protein with the cottage cheese. I eat it plain, make scrambled eggs, use it in a smoothie. All right. You make scrambled eggs with the cottage cheese too. Never tried that. I love all these great ideas. I'm going to give that a go. I've never seen Burson in the... Um, supermarket here so I'm gonna go looking for it I love Aldi because your choices are limited and you can get your shopping done really quick for those of you who shop at Aldi uh, but then obviously the little gourmet things other brand name stuff got to go to Woolies for that oh we, we call it Woolies but it's called Woolworths there's that alarm that I always forget to turn off <laughs> don't discriminate any dairy. Don't like offending the cows. <laughs> That's great. I have a friend who's uh, my my best mate. His wife is Swiss or Swiss German, technically. And in Switzerland, cows are revered in much the same way that they are in uh, India, in a way. And they, I think, there's like this yearly or annual celebration where they adorn the cows with. Uh, headdresses that are made out of flowers like local well, pick locally picked flowers and um yeah it's always fascinated me how their their reverence for for cows in other countries we don't have the same sort of reverence for cows here when i was growing up in the bush in western australia we always had milking cows and so 
there are different breeds of cows that produce different kinds of milk. Bit of a segue here for you in case you're interested in cows. <laughs> so uh, in Australia here, we have a few different breeds, but one of the common milking cows is uh, Frisians. So the Frisians are known for their volume of milk. So they can produce a lot of milk um, when they're, obviously when they've got a calf, but the milk isn't quite as creamy as other breeds. So we have, we had another breed of cow, which is uh, a Guernsey, a Guernsey? Jersey, Jersey cow. Okay, so Jersey and Guernsey, they're two islands that are in the British Isles. Um, the one that we had was, so I think this is where this breed comes from. So we had a Jersey cow and the she would produce less milk, but the amount of cream that was in her milk was astounding. So when you like milk the cow, mum would bring, mum would usually milk the cow, occasionally I would do it. And uh, so she'd bring, bring back this big like five litre bucket of milk and then that would then go, we'd then sieve that into other buckets and then it would sit in the fridge, right? Imagine like a two, like a gallon bucket of milk sitting in the fridge. And then the milk from the Jersey cow, it would, I kid you not, it would be like that thick, the cream on the top would be that thick. It would just be an enormous amount of cream that it would produce. So there you go. There's a little bit of trivia for you about different breeds of cows and how much uh, cream they actually produce with their milk. All right. So let's have a look and see if we've got, if I've missed anybody. No, I have gotten, picked up everybody. I see there's a lot of talking amongst yourselves going on there, which I do enjoy, <laughs> do like to see. Um, I'm going to talk about that. When I visited the UK, I went to Wensleydale, was in cheese heaven. So Wensleydale, they specialize in cheeses there, do they? I haven't actually been to the UK, but I do want to go there. Look at that Wensleydale cheese. Yeah, I'm just having a look at this screen. It's a dale. It's like Yorkshire, Yorkshire dale. Like um, used to read James Herriot books when I was a kid. I don't know if anybody else uh, read those as well. All right, let's just see who else has been tuning in here. Uh, Bypass Carnival. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you joining me. It's an evening for you. Seven or eight o'clock, I guess. Becky Mueller, welcome. Ah, oh, you've changed. You've you've gone with your. Um, <laughs> with your actual name instead of carnival dog sitter that's okay it's fine to change although i do remember you as as carnival dog sitter but thanks for joining thanks for tuning in how's everyone been going with their with their eating i know some of you are just starting off eating the carnival way some of you have been doing it for a long time um have you had any particular sort of a challenge i was talking to one of my um nutrition slash exercise clients yesterday and she had uh, she has where she has difficulty is with social occasions so she went out to a restaurant with a friend and she was saying the only options that she had at the restaurant was basically cheese and wine they were the only two things <laughs> that that she, she might even look at and she ended up having some pizza and but I thought the great thing was she didn't actually get really down on herself about the fact that she couldn't, she had to like go off plan at, at the restaurant because the very next day she was just back on plan again and it didn't really uh, have that too much of an impact on her. And I think that's, it's, it's super important to be flexible enough to go, okay, well, if I do go off plan, then I can just jump straight back on again. I think if you, if you, are in a space where if you go off plan, then that's it. You're just going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It may not work all that well because you, we're humans, right? We can't always control every single thing down to the nth detail about our environment and what we can eat. So yeah, that's a that's something that I think is a is a good way to look at it. If you if you do have a, a drift off plan for a sec for whatever reason because it's a social occasion, then just jump back on again and just keep on going. So. And you'll eventually, you know, I think if you can say, I know for some people, they their reactions to different foods are such that they, it really is unpleasant to go off plan if they've changed their diet to carnivore. Uh, but for a lot of us, we can, we can do, we're okay with a 95%, 5% and there's still major, major health benefits available if you're 
on plan 90, 95% of the time, I think, or even, even a little less rather than just, you know, eating the standard American diet or the standard Australian diet. They have cow lifelike statues everywhere in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, my, my friend actually paints them as well. So I didn't realize that they had uh, lifelike statues of them all over Switzerland. It's interesting. Would love to go to Switzerland one day. Becky Mueller, day 89. No plans to go off plan tomorrow. <laughs> well done. Good for you. So you're almost at, you're almost at your three month mark. Well done. And what have you found? What's, what's been the biggest improvement to your health for you? I know for me, and I talk about this a lot, it's not having any bowel issues. And it's not something that, you know, is an exciting topic to talk about. But, you know, if you have bowel issues, life is, can be pretty miserable. It can have this sort of knock-on effect to all kinds of parts of your life. And um, where to the point where you just don't want to associate, you don't want to be around other people if you've got massive bowel issues and just being able to eliminate those with for one of you know a bit tongue in cheek there right excuse the pun but yeah not having any sort of bloating gas etc very very happy not to be without that and i think that's probably the one thing i would say has been worth transitioning to uh, a meat-based diet has been that particular benefit there's been others but that's the one that i i enjoy the most so tell me what your What's the thing that you've enjoyed the most about switching your diet to the carnival way? You can get out of bed, Becky. <laughs> That's awesome. Obviously you had trouble getting out of bed. I was, I was speaking to my client um, yesterday. Her goal is at the moment she can't actually get up. If she lays on the floor, she can't actually get up without any without some sort of assistance either from somebody else or she needs to be able to pull herself up like on a couch or a chair or something like that. So her goal is to be able to actually get herself up off the floor. So that's going to be a combination of losing some weight but also strengthening uh, her legs and lower body and core so that she can actually uh, support herself. So yeah, get, actually being able to get out of bed. Do you mean like were you quite brain fogged or just tired all the time so that that's that was something that you've um gotten back in your life but no arthritis pain yeah 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 my i i've had well undiagnosed arthritis in my wrists and forearms for i don't know since i was like in my mid-20s and the uh, i still experience pain if i use my computer a lot but it's it's eased off so much by lowering inflammation in my diet. It's just amazing how much of a difference it makes. So now um, if it, <laughs> I move my head like this a lot because I actually, I, I haven't got to turn on at the, mount, at the moment, but I have some software on my computer, which if I move my head, actually it tracks my face and it moves the mouse on the screen. And then I also have, oh, you can't actually see it, but I, I, on, on the ground I have, a, um, a foot mouse so it's actually like two pedals that I can use my feet my toes to actually press the mouse buttons um, and I used to have to rely on those 95% of the time because I if I just use my keyboard and mouse just for five minutes I would start to experience really severe pain and now I can actually go a couple of hours just using my everyday keyboard and mouse so I can sit somewhere else with my laptop and it's no problem so it's it's, and it's, but it's been a slow process. So this is the thing I always say to people, if you, if you do have some health conditions, particularly ones that have taken a long time to develop, then it's worth remembering that they took a long time to develop. They're probably going to take a long time to go away, but absolutely reducing inflammation has been the key to um, allowing those health conditions to solve for me. And, and it's the same for a lot of people. Uh, no sciatica. Yeah, that's the same with me, Becky. Another one. So I had sciatica for a good six months before I switched to carnivore. And as of about five weeks ago, no more sciatica. It's really, really good. C couldn't really walk. My, I couldn't do anything more than a uh, relatively medium paced walk. I was going to say a brisk walk, but I couldn't even do that. And now I can run, jog, sprint. I've got to do some, uh, I want to do a sprint with my 15 year old son. I think he'll flog me, but I want to have a go at that. We'll do a hundred minute sprint together. Petra, watching from Germany. It's 11.26. Are you normally a night owl? Do you like to stay up late? 
I'm one of these people who gets up really early. I like to get up around 4.30, 5. And then I'm usually in bed reading on my Kindle by 8.30 at the latest and gone gone by 9. So the idea of staying up to 11.30, that would be an extremely late night for me. Shelby Webb, carnivore cured your type 2 diabetes and my interstitial cystitis. I actually don't know what interstitial cystitis is. So I am going to look that up. How's it spelled? Cystitis. What's the description for that? It's a disorder in which the bladder uh, is overly sensitive and right. Okay, there you go. That, oh, frequent need to urine. Up to 60 times a day, you need to go to the bathroom. That must have been super annoying. I, I can't even imagine what that would be like. And so that is now cured. Well, that must be an absolutely life transforming thing. I can't even imagine. So excellent. I'm so happy to hear that. The best thing is no cravings. It is, isn't it? At least I, f I find at one stage you're saying, okay, 100% have no cravings. I would say 100% for me personally. But um, able to divert any sort of want to snack or have a bit of a nibble on something to something that's still on plan. So, you know, cold butter is a great one for me and or a piece of cheese or something like that. I'm very happy that I um, can I can sit in front of something that's going to chow down on anything that's loaded with carbs and I'm not going to have any problems. My wife has uh, likes to... In have a, the occasional piece of chocolate. Uh, I've gone past the stage where give me some of that where I'm just like, oh, it just doesn't doesn't phase me at all. So it's nice having that power. It's like you get your willpower, but I think it's probably more that this, that there's the, it's the craving that's gone. So I think we all have willpower, but there's, it gets overridden by these insatiable cravings that you can get when you get used to eating uh, processed carbohydrates. So yeah, I really like that part of it. So you do natural bodybuilding. Yeah, I, I noticed that from your uh, profile. So that is uh, like, do you do competitions? So I guess I know there's the amateur competitions, professional competitions. Which one, whereabouts do you fit in that? I'm interested. Lorraine, little to no bloat, less bathroom issues and less niggly aches and pains. Yeah. That's good. That's good, isn't it? You know, isn't it funny how all of these things that everybody's been mentioning here have very little to do with, I don't think anybody's actually mentioned weight loss at the moment. A lot of people do start, but there's also a lot of people and it's less talked about is all of these health issues. And I feel like this is becoming more what the carnival way of eating is becoming known for. Like it's a way for people to actually heal their bodies uh, you know, heal their minds for people who suffer from a lot of brain fog, heal autoimmune issues. Uh, I like that that's more becoming the mainstream conversation around the carnival way of eating. Um, it's still an important tool for people to lose weight, but there's so many other benefits that, that go along with it. And it's really good to hear people talking about that. Becky, I'm swimming laps and doing water aerobics four times a week. How good is that? Okay, so I could go on. Feel free to share. Uh, my mum is, she turned 70 uh, the, the other day. So she actually, uh, I was born when she was 17 years old. And she does, she goes down to the pool, I think three times a week. And she does 20 laps. So it's a, it's an Olympic pool. So what's that? 50, 50, just 25 metres. I think Olympic pool is 25 meters. So she does 20 laps, 10 laps at 50. So yeah, 500 meters. Pretty amazing. I, I couldn't swim two laps. I'm, swimming is not my, my forte. I have lots of other things that I'm good at, but definitely can't swim. But yeah, she's in the 70. Well, she's now in the 70s and uh, doing that. And I think the thing about exercise is so critical to aging well. And if you can exercise regularly, especially if it's some sort of weight bearing, bearing exercise where you're uh, compressing your, your skeleton, it, it keeps, um, 
calcium and other minerals being sort of continually layered on it it keeps your uh, ligaments and other things uh, strong because they're being used they're being put under put under pressure and just means that your body keeps on working the way that it's meant to and yeah it's it's one of those things that as you get older then a lot of people suffer or they don't have a very good experience later in life and they really should be because for many it means then they're not having to work as hard anymore they've they've got some finances behind them they've got you know kids have all grown up so they've got more leisure time and you should be able to enjoy that time without having to suffer just to get around i think so exercise is critical i'm constantly banging on about this i know but if you are not exercising regularly I really encourage you to start. Find something that you enjoy, even if it's just gardening or it's walking or something. Just find something that you can do on a regular basis, three to five days a week. If it's every day, even better. And watch how your health improves. Yes, you know your diet's really important. Yes, getting enough sleep's really important. Minimizing stress, but exercise is absolutely critical. It's it's one of the, it's like a really key part of uh, keeping your health. It, Keeping yourself in peak health for as long as you live. That's what I want for everybody. So, yes, feel free to share, Becky. I I like hearing what people are up to. I've never done water aerobics myself. I always, when I, when I, when I think of water aerobics, I think of like, you know that show, The Love Boat, the, the TV series that used to be around in the, in the 80s? I feel like the retirees doing, I know I shouldn't really pick fun on retirees because I'm, probably going to be a retiree in the next decade myself but that's what I think of so I don't quite put myself in that I'm not quite ready for that yet but it probably is pretty hard it's like I used to think that um oh, what is it so oh, Pilates yeah see I used to think that Pilates was something that was kind of like an easier version of yoga and then I discovered well no it's actually not it's a really hard version of, of yoga I don't know if anyone's ever done Pilates but it's really if you want to do an exercise that you haven't done before that really strengthens your core, Pilates is the go. It's the it's the exercise that uh, came out of ballet dancing. So ballet dancers to keep themselves really strong. That's Pilates is what they do. Obviously, ballet they're just doing ballet makes them stronger, but they also do Pilates as well. One to check out. Our body does water Pilates. It's called guts and glutes. Yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, I, we, I used to do Pilates for a couple of years when I lived in Perth, which is in Western Australia on the other side of the country. I live in Sydney now. And the instructors, they had the most incredibly strong core muscles. It was unbelievable what they could do. I just, I trained there for a couple of years and I, st I still had no, I couldn't do anything like what they could do with their, with their core muscles. Really amazing how strong you can make your body if you work it consistently. Annabella, the happy carnival, welcome. Thank you for uh, tuning in, and I'm glad to see you here. Hopefully, your week has been going well so far. I watched one of your videos recently. Uh, was it yesterday? So, yeah, look, keep up with your videos. There's, even if you are doing other things, um, focusing on other things in your life the video is uh, maybe it's not the same for everybody but i find create there being a content creator is actually really cathartic <laughs> and it and in the process of uh talking about what's going on it's kind of like a therapy session almost i mean it's not a replacement for therapy but it is somewhat like that i've found that in the process of talking about what's going on you 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 kind of into it allows you to integrate sometimes you might be having a negative experience or something that's not working great but it allows you to integrate that experience and understand it from a different perspective when you actually talk about it and if you're just talking about it to a camera even just doing that is really beneficial and then you do get some feedback from the community about that but the other great thing is that there's always somebody out there who is going through something like what you're going through and they can then relate and it also allows them to integrate that experience into their own life in a more positive way as well. So yeah, I encourage you to keep keep going with your content production and maybe one day we'll see your face on your channel. That would be cool too. I'd enjoy that. 
<laughs> you're absolutely welcome. It's, it's, uh, I'm glad that you're part of the community. So Shelby Webb with inter interstitial cyst, try and say, try and say that three times fast, interstitial cystitis. I had constant pain and knew where every bathroom was in every place I went. <laughs> had it for over 20 years. Wow. And you had to get your bladder. Oh my God. That's phenomenal. Isn't that amazing? And how long did it take from when you started carnivore to when that condition, you know, when you were, when you could say that you were completely cured? That's when I'm just blown away by, by that you were able to cure that condition. And obviously you would have had every single intervention under the sun to attempt to mitigate that in, in those 20 years as well. Uh, don't do bodybuilding competitions, although I often get asked to. <laughs> they would consume too much of my time and I have a business to run, so maybe in the future. Yeah, it's, uh, it seems to me, I, I became interested in bodybuilding at a very young age when I was like 13, reading Arnold Schwarzenegger's book, which was, uh, was it, um, oh, it was something of a bodybuilder. I think it was his first book. And then there was Pumping Iron as well was another one. And then it used to order, you know, before it was before the internet, before anything else like that. So I lived out in the country, so I used to get um, uh, the the wider magazines by mail. So Muscle and Fitness was one. And then the other one, I forget, there was like two publications used to get them each month, get get them delivered to me. I was just looking forward to those. Um, yeah, but it's, it's one of those... If you call it a sport, but it's just a, it's, it, it's kind of a lifestyle as well, the whole bodybuilding thing. I'm very glad that I found it because I think that, you know, as a, someone who's 52, going on 53, I don't have any joint issues. I don't have, I've got no problems with my knees. I can pick up both my kids, walk up five flights of stairs if I need to without any pain. And I think a lot of that's just from constantly training with weights throughout my entire adult life so yeah it's a it's a something i've always enjoyed and i'm always i'm very grateful that i found it at a very young age because i think that uh my body has hung together really well because of that tracy kinsel welcome thanks for tuning in today i forget where you are i know you're in the state somewhere but i oh yeah no it's escaping me let us know where you're, where you're tuning in from today. And thank you for everybody for joining in. I appreciate you um, being part of the channel. I appreciate all of the, uh, the comments that people put on the videos uh, that I'm producing. <laughs> it's, 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 been a, it's been a blast. It's one of those things that I wish I'd started many, many years ago, but I'm glad that I have. And it's nice to have this community of people. Uh, so why, who made you go carnivore? Well, the the question to who made me go carnivore is um, Dr. Jordan Peterson, actually. So I'm sure many people saw the interview that he did with uh, with Joe Rogan. And, you know, they, they briefly talked about carnivore. But when he started to talk about how he, you know, he was suffering from severe depression and he had didn't have to take any medication. You know, he used to have to get operations for gingivitis and now that was completely cured. Um, he used to have uh, psoriasis. He, he, he lost, was it 60, 70 pounds or something like that? I mean, he just looked like a, a vital human being and he's in his 60s and to have that sort of reversal of many long and chronic health conditions, I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then there was a simplicity to it as well, which I find really appealing because I'm always looking for life hacks, right? Things that allow you to do more with less and less time so you can spend more time doing things that you enjoy more, right? So that's kind of what got me interested in uh, the carnivore way of eating. And then I also, you know, listened to him and then once I started to watch other other creators talking about that, I thought, you yeah, know, I've got some of these health other health issues, things to do with um, um, a bowel and... The complications of eating and finding food and shopping and cooking and all that sort of stuff, I thought, wow, I, you know, I don't really have much to lose and I'm interested in being a more vital human being. So that's actually, that's who got me started. That's how I got started. And then 
but it, it was also for me it was an access to to it was like a new intervention and it gave me something else to, to I, i've always had this idea that i wanted to talk about health and fitness and diet in in as a general thing with a new youtube channel so that was part of what made me go down that path as well and then you know i've i've gained all the things i wanted to gain out of that and and more as far as my health goes but i think this it's just really important that more people find out about this so it's a bit of a humanitarian mission for me <laughs> now to continue on so it's not just for me um you know i've got relatives and close family who are really ill and i know you can't always tell you can't tell family you should try this out you have to just kind of you have to be the lighthouse you you have to show people through your own example how what what being in really peak health actually means so i'm hopeful that you know eventually family will become so interested in in what's happening with my health that they'll actually you know at least try an elimination diet for a period of time and see how things improve for them so there's that as well so you know i've all the reasons why i started i've i've gotten sort of ticked all those boxes as to why i started and now i just can't imagine going back to eating the way that i used to i yeah it's just not something that i want to do i want to have the health that i've got now and i want other people to experience this level of vitality and health as well so that's part of a big part of the reason why i keep on doing what i'm doing it's a good question. Shelby Webb, took me four months to help me. So grateful with no more procedures, pain or treatments. Wow. It's still a really short period of time though, isn't it? When you compare how long you've suffered with that condition for. That's, that's pretty amazing. You know, I, I imagine a, a time when there will be a dietary intervention will be the first thing that a doctor looks at whenever he has a new patient come in with a many different conditions the dietary intervention will come first rather than the pharmaceutical intervention i imagine that's probably a little way away yet but definitely in our lifetime so what was my diet like before yeah it was it had evolved over time i was mostly keto at that stage um so my typical the food that I would eat in the day would be a smoothie packed with loads of spinach, avocado, um, protein powder, uh, a lot of coconut oil. So I was, I was actually, uh, I liked, uh, I was already aware that a high fat diet was a really good thing. Uh, what else did I used to put in it? Oh, peanut butter. Yeah, a bunch of things. So I was consuming a fair amount of inflammatory food because I think about the amount of spinach that I was eating the amount of oxalates that I was consuming because I didn't use to blanch the um, spinach or anything. That that was probably, you know, causing a lot of inflammation for me. That would be my first meal of the day. Um, yeah, do, I'd also add a banana in there and then um, eat a lot of eggs. Yeah, and eggs and cheese and not not a great deal of meat. That was my... That was my diet, so I was very heavy on eggs, very heavy on cheese, and there was that sort of morning smoothie that had a lot of processed food, uh, you know, processed material in it as well, and a lot of oxalates. So it wasn't that big of a, a shift, so I was already fairly low carbohydrate, probably around about 50, 60 grams of carbs a day. So, um, but also after work, I had a lot of, I had, did have a lot of sweet things in my diet, so I really enjoyed diet, soft drinks. I used to do a, uh, travel a lot so we do like processed protein bars a lot of those um and then a lot of ice cream as well so i'd eat ice cream after after work was sort of like this treat that i would have and i switched up for like keto based you know the so when you go keto there's so many keto treats around it's it's evolved into just another way for food companies to to market and manufacture really highly processed foods. That's what's happened with with the whole keto thing. So I used to have a lot of that. So eliminating that was part of my transition. So 
yeah, now I'm really happy that I don't. I, my cupboards are almost bare. <laughs> They've gradually just whittled away and I'm throwing stuff out and I open the cupboard now and there's really not much in there. My boys still occasionally will have, um, like they make porridge in the morning. So I've got some rolled oats porridge in the cupboard and um, my kids like to have peanut butter on toast or Vegemite or something like that occasionally as well. So, you know, I have that stuff. So if I didn't have children, my cupboards would be completely bare. The only food I would have would be what's in my fridge. And it just, life is just so much simpler from a shopping perspective. It's really good. Uh, Tracy, you're in Corpus Christi in Texas. I remember you were in Texas, but I didn't remember exactly where you were. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Debbie Sue, hello from Half Moon Bay in California. Sounds like a place that's got a nice view of the water. I suppose a lot of California does, right? Because it's on the coast. Thanks for tuning in today. Annabella, the happy carnivore. You used to juice fruit and veggies thinking it was good for me. <laughs> I did that with skin cancer. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 I went through a juicing phase as well. I used to juice so much stuff. I just, yeah. And I uh, liked doing sweet potato, potatoes, uh, you know, frozen peas. But yeah, you used to consume a lot of um, spinach. But I, it wasn't until I eliminated veggies, potatoes and whatnot, that I realized that was what was causing a lot of the bloating. I used to go to, I remember going to bed, trying to go to sleep and just really like, oh, it's just feeling awful in my stomach trying to, and then having these really weird dreams as a result as well. It wasn't much fun. I'm glad, glad to be rid of that. Well, this has been fun today. 50 minutes has flown by. Um, let's just see if I've missed anybody. There we see. It's the town in which Mavericks surfing takes place. I'm, a, I'm feeling like I'm a little bit ill-informed. I'm going to have to look up Mavericks surfing. Is it some sort of, some sort of a competition or like a glow uh, surfing competition? Mavericks is a surfing location in Northern California outside uh, just north of the town of Half Moon Bay. Okay. Oh, so it's like big wave surfing. Got it. Okay. Sounds cool. I'm going to look up a short film about that because it's not something that I've seen before. Uh, did I cons Do I consume any fruit anymore? If so, which? Yeah, occasionally. So I'm... My kids really like, I've got a Thermomix. For those of you who have a Thermomix, you know what I mean? It's an awesome kitchen gadget. And I make banana ice cream. So you freeze the bananas, I'll peel them, freeze them, and then they go in the Thermomix. And then it's like a, it's like a blender on steroids, basically. It's really high speed, very, very powerful. And it makes the most perfect ice cream. That's all there is in it, is just frozen bananas. So my small children like have that every couple of weeks on average and so I have some of that um, but other than that yeah I don't do any other fruit just because it, it bananas I seem to be okay with that doesn't cause any sort of mm, weird reaction I just like being low carb I just like being in ketosis that's I find I'm at my sharpest there I know that our hearts like ketones for energy heart yeah, heart muscle actually that's a preferred energy source preferred energy source for your brain as well so my way of thinking is the more ketones I've got floating around my bloodstream, the more, um, the the better I am as a human being and as a as a creative person as well. So, yeah, that's the extent of my fruit consumption. And occasionally I'll try something like blueberries, but it's just it's pretty irregular. I don't have anything regularly that I have as far as fruit goes. And I know um, Paul Saladino talks about you know how he reintroduced fruit into his diet, and I think well, if if it's if it works for you, then you should introduce it. It's, I, if there's one particular fruit that I enjoy, yeah, I think blueberries, I really enjoy those. Um, oh, what else? Oh, mangoes. I really like mangoes. My daughter wanted a mango, so I bought a mango for her and then I had some of that. Super tasty. I find I, yeah, fruit I don't, I know it's, it's funny how some people react badly to fruit and some people don't and then some people don't react to veggies i react a lot to vegetables so yeah the occasional bit of fruit but as i say staying in ketosis works for me and that's how i prefer to be fury smith late to the chat really don't want to hear bad things about dairy <laughs> Lol, i need cream in my coffee yeah look, i don't have i i i feel fortunate that i've i'm able to tolerate all kinds of dairy without any issues at all so um 
and I'm just a bit bin, what called bingy with cream, but I've, I've managed to make friends with that. There was something that, um, oh, I forget who it was, mentioned something about just noticing how when you how you feel after you consume something and how you feel during when you consume it. If there's a if it's kind of the same, then it's probably a good thing, and that's how I am with cream. Like I really enjoy uh, heavy cream, and then I do feel good afterwards. Like there was initially there was this kind of like guilt, like it was a, a forbidden thing, but now I'm I'm at the stage where it's like no, why, why feel guilty about that? That actually I don't have any issues. I I can binge on it, sure, because it's so good. But I don't. It doesn't cause me any any problems as far as my health or my digestion goes. So it's a real treat for me, and obviously, it's a lot of additional um, calories. So I'm just. I don't watch or count calories or anything like that. But I know that if I'm going to go through a tub of cream a day, well, that's an extra like seven eight hundred calories. I probably don't need that. So yeah, if I limit my consumption of heavy cream to every few days, then it makes it more of a treat for me as well. So. Yeah, let's uh, enjoy your dairy if you can tolerate it and it doesn't cause you any issues. Annabelle, the happy carnivore, do you check your ketones when you have the bananas? No, I don't. You know, I used to, ha I do have a ketone uh, meter, you know, the finger prick one, but I don't check that now because the reason why I used to check it was I was wanting to drop some body fat and that was many, like at least six months ago. So I was interested in whether I was in ketosis or not. But since I switched to carnivore, I've just gradually, my body has gotten leaner and leaner over time. So I haven't felt the need to check that because it's obvious that I must be in ketosis. Otherwise, I wouldn't be losing, you know, adipose tissue. And, you know, for the, really for the first time in my adult life, I'm quite happy with where my uh, body composition is. So, but I'm sure it would it would kick me out of ketosis, surely, because there's a lot of sugar in um, bananas. But I'm okay with that on the odd occasion most of the time i feel pretty confident i'm in ketosis and i've gotten to the stage now where i can feel how my my brain works differently i'm much more alert my ability to focus don't get distracted i, I don't have adhd although i've never been diagnosed but i just find that i'm less prone to being distracted can really easily zone in and focus in on a particular task if i'm um you know if i've been especially if I haven't eaten like this time of the day is a good example so I haven't actually eaten any food since 6 30 last night and I feel very very sharp very alert so I'm obviously in ketosis at the moment oh, well, I think I would be anyway I'd be it'd be it would be more of a point of interest to actually check it Annabella so yeah it's something that I, I may do just just to just to see where I'm at I noticed how Sean Baker is um, going through I don't know if any, any of you follow his channel he's going through uh trying to cure a soul a shoulder issue by being more in ketosis so he achieved that by just lowering his food volume and when he checked his ketones he was like 2.3 first thing <laughs> first thing in the morning which is really really high um and he's working on the basis that being in a ketogenic state or in being in, um being in ketosis is a uh, allows the body to heal and really lowers inflammatory uh, the inflammatory response in a big way so that he can heal so i'll be interested to see how he actually goes with that because i think he's been doing that for probably a month i, I think he was going to try that for 30 days and i haven't checked in on his latest videos on his channel but i'm interested to see whether he's managed to cure that condition because um you know he's an ortho orthopedic surgeon so from his point of view if he can't cure it that way then he may actually have to get surgery so how cool would that be if he's actually able to cure some, an injury like that just through diet alone? All right, guys. Well, we're, I think I will we'll wrap it up now. I, thank you, everybody, for joining in. really appreciate your time. Thank you to Melissa and Bonnie for helping manage things in the background there. I'm seeing about, uh, what, 130 <laughs> comments. So it's really cool that everybody joins in. I really appreciate that. Uh, there, of course, if you are tuning in on the replay, uh, feel free to drop a comment with where you tuned in from. I always like to know where people are joining in from. I will obviously have a episode of the Dishwashing Philosopher coming out later this week. We'll have the um, the interview that I did with Nia from Nia's Way, and there's also a 
a new person, uh, her name is Emily Holcroft, and I'll have her interview released next week. I think you'll really enjoy her. She's a relatively unknown uh, person in the carnivore space, but someone who I think uh, will be uh, someone, someone that you'll see more of, I think, in the future. Susan Hampton, that's okay. I appreciate you tuning in anyway. Good to see you. And I will no doubt see you in the comments now that you're back from holidays. So, but thanks for tuning in and saying hi. That's it, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye for now.